dear students so today let us we study about the compounds of xenon you know xenon belongs to the class of the noble gases helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon are collectively called noble gases because they contain the eight electrons in the valence shell having ns2 np6 electronic configuration these the noble gases are also called inert gases and they are highly stable when we go down in a group of the periodic table the atomic size increases therefore the size of xenon is the highest in case of the noble gases of course after the xenon you have a radon this radon is a radioactive element hence we are not considering this radon because of the increase in the atomic size under a drastic condition xenon gives out its electron and forms a compound with highly electronegative element that is fluorine it also reacts with oxygen and forms oxides of xenon and also with the oxyfluorides now let us we take among the noble gases xenon results with other elements to form the compounds as i have said examples of xenon fluorides are xenon difluoride xenon tetrafluoride and xenon hexafluoride xenon oxides are xenon trioxide and xenon tetroxide oxyfluorides of xenon are xenon dioxy difluoride xenon oxy tetrafluoride and xenon trioxy difluoride now among all these the xenon compounds let us we study xenon difluoride xenon tetrafluoride and xenon trioxide coming to the xenon difluoride it is prepared by heating xenon and fluorine in a sealed nickel vessel at around 670 kelvin here xenon reacts with fluorine and forms xenon difluoride xenon difluoride can also be prepared by irradiating a mixture of xenon and fluorine with light from a high pressure mercury arc so here the xenon reacts with the fluorine and forms xenon difluoride xenon difluoride is a white crystalline solid with a melting point 140 degree centigrade it is quite stable and stored in silica or nickel or monel metal containers it dissolves in hydrofluoric acid and extremely strong fluorinating agent and also oxidizing agent so nitric oxide reacts with xenon fluoride and forms the nitrogen oxyfluoride and xenon this is an example for fluorination reaction xenon difluoride also reacts with hydrogen to form hydrofluoric acid giving xenon this reaction can be this reaction be an example for oxidation here oxidation state of hydrogen is zero and in case of hf the oxidation state of hydrogen is plus 1 since there is an increase in the oxidation state therefore the it is an example of oxidation 
Coming to the xenon tetrafluoride, it is prepared by direct reaction between xenon and fluorine in the ratio of 1 is to 5 in a nickel tube at 670 Kelvin under a pressure of 6 atmosphere for about an hour and further condensing the product. There the xenon reacts with excess of fluorine at this condition to form xenon tetrafluoride. Pure xenon tetrafluoride is obtained by reacting with dioxy difluoride and xenon at low temperature. So in these cases the reactions are important and also the balanced equations. The xenon tetrafluoride is a volatile solid which sublimes on heating in a current of nitrogen forming colorless vapors. Xenon tetrafluoride is stored in dry pyrex or nickel container. It dissolves in liquid hydrofluoric acid. It is fairly strong fluorinating agent and oxidizing agent. The example for fluorination reaction is platinum reacts with xenon tetrafluoride to form platinum tetrafluoride and xenon. Oxidation reaction is xenon tetrafluoride reacts with potassium iodide and forms xenon and potassium fluoride and iodine. Here in Ki oxidation state of iodine is minus 1 and in case of iodine its oxidation state is 0. So the number is increased from minus 1 to 0 hence this is an oxidation reaction. Xenon tetrafluoride undergoes hydrolysis to form xenon trioxide. This reaction is an important reaction. 6XeF4 plus 12H2O gives 4Xe plus 2XeO3 plus 24HF plus 3O2. Coming to the lastly, the xenon trioxide. Xenon trioxide is obtained by the hydrolysis of xenon tetrafluoride or xenon hexafluoride. The solution on evaporation gives xenon trioxide. So the reaction is already given in the above. And the another example is XeF6 plus 3H2O gives XeO3 plus 6HF. Xenon trioxide is a volatile and highly explosive solid. It is stable in acidic solution. It dissolves in water to give weakly acidic solutions. Xenon, xenon trioxide with water gives xenic acid formula H2XeO4. In alkaline medium it forms a salt called sodium per xenate formula Na4XeO6. It is a powerful oxidizing agent in acidic medium. Coming to the bonding in xenon compounds. Let us we take the first one bonding in xenon difluoride. In xenon difluoride, xenon is the central atom, atomic number 54, electronic configuration 4d10, 5s2, 5p6. This electronic configuration shows that xenon atom contains no unpaired electrons. But to form xenon difluoride, it needs two unpaired electrons. To explain this phenomenon, it is suggested when fluorine atom comes nearer to xenon, xenon atom undergoes excitation and one of the electron from 5p z orbital shifts to 5d orbitals. This excitation is shown. 
of course the xenon because of its bigger size and also to promote the electron from 5p z to 5d the energy required is very high which is around 1670 kilojoules per mole during the formation of xenon difluoride xenon atom undergoes sp3d hybridization resulting in trigonal bipyramid geometry in this trigonal bipyramid geometry the three non bonding electron pairs are at the points of an equilateral triangle because of this the other two the xenon the fluorine atoms they are on the vertical of this direction hence xenon difluoride is having a linear geometry with a bond angle 180 degree xenon fluorine bond length is 180 degree pico sorry 180 198 picometer because of the three lone pairs of electrons on the triangular here there is no the net repulsive force is zero therefore xenon difluoride exists a perfect linear geometry coming to the bonding in xenon tetrafluoride in xenon tetrafluoride the xenon is the central atom atomic number is 54 electronic configuration is 4d10 5s2 5p6 this electronic configuration shows that xenon atom contains no unpaired electrons but to form xenon tetrafluoride it needs four unpaired electrons so for to achieve this it is suggested when fluorine atom comes nearer to xenon atom xenon atom undergoes excitation and one of the electrons from 5py and 5pz orbitals shifts to 5d orbitals i have said here this excitation needs very high energy during the formation of xenon tetrafluoride xenon atom undergoes sp3d2 hybridization resulting in octahedral geometry here the two non bonding electron pairs are at the two opposite corners of an octahedron the four sp3d2 hybridized orbitals of xenon overlaps with 2pz orbitals of fluorine to form four covalent bonds leading to the geometry of the square planar with a bond angle 90 degree <coughs> here also the two lone pairs of electrons the net attractive for the repulsive forces becomes zero hence xenon tetrafluoride is having a perfect geometry with a bond angle 90 degree and xef bond length 195 picometer now coming to the bonding in xenon trioxide in xenon trioxide the xenon is the central atom atomic number 54 electronic configuration 4d10 5s2 5p6 this electronic configuration shows that xenon atom contains no unpaired electrons but to form xenon trioxide it needs three unpaired electrons to form xeo sigma bonds and three unpaired electrons to form the pi bonds when xenon atom when oxygen atom comes nearer to xenon atom xenon atom undergoes excitation and three electrons from 5p orbitals shifts to 5d orbitals the excited electronic configuration is shown which needs very very high energy during the formation of xenon trioxide xenon atom undergoes 
only sp3 hybridization resulting in tetrahedral geometry in this geometry one of the sp3 hybridized orbital contains a lone pair of electron because of this lone pair of electron it undergoes the repulsion as a result xeo xe bond angle gets reduced from 107 degree to 103 degree and the xenon the unpaired electron in the xenon atom combines with the unpaired electron of the oxygen laterally to form a pi bond between the two here two py orbitals of oxygen overlaps laterally with 5d orbitals of xenon resulting the d pi p pi bond xenon trioxide results trigonal pyramidal geometry instead of the tetrahedral geometry it is because of the lone pair of electron on the xenon the xeo bond length here is 176 picometer here i have shown the the diagrams or the structures of these compounds now coming to the the xenon difluoride here it is having a perfect geometry because all the three lone pairs of electrons are in one plane so the repulsive force nullifies therefore the bond angle becomes a perfect bond angle in all these the xenon difluoride and xenon tetrafluoride they have perfect geometry so there is no dipole moment in these molecules i have shown various formats of the xenon difluoride and the xenon tetrafluoride structures however in case of xenon trioxide there is a dipole moment because of a lone pair of electron on the xenon so this results a, a distortion hence the it shows the dipole moment in this i have shown a structure of xenon trioxide you have to remember sometimes they ask what is the geometry and how many unpaired electrons are there how many lone pairs of electrons are there in these xenon compounds so it is given in the table here i have shown the structures of the xenon compounds xenon difluoride is having linear structure tetrafluoride is having square planar structure hexafluoride is having distorted octahedral structure the xenon trioxide is having pyramidal structure xenon oxy tetrafluoride is having square pyramidal structure xenon dioxy difluoride is having trigonal bipyramidal structure and xenon oxy difluoride is having t shaped structure so students go through the structures of these compounds and the you know the xenon is a inert gas but it forms a compounds however we don't find this type of compounds either in helium neon argon compounds of course there is a very rare the krypton also forms a compounds but those are highly unstable go through these structures and learn much more about thank you